All right, Steeler fans, it is time for the Monday morning conversation. And I told you this on Friday that we are going to start diving into the AFC North because with training camp right around the corner, it's time that Steeler fans should know what's going on with their rivals and enemies amongst the AFC North. And we're going to start with the Cleveland Browns of all teams, the Cleveland Browns with John Sushan, who covers the Browns, the Fanatical Elves podcasting network here on Fans First Sports Network. John, you've been on the show before. Welcome back. How are you? Thank you. Uh, I'm doing well. Uh, looking forward to a, another competitive AFC North battle between you guys and us and all the other two uh, squads. Absolutely. Hey, let's ask, let's start out of the gate and we're going to go back to 2023, but I, I do have to ask you when you found out that hard knocks is going to be covering the division in the yeah. very tail end, what was your, what was your take? Cause with Steeler fans, they were not 100% sold on this. They were kind of like, ah, I don't know. The Browns have been on hard knocks before. The Steelers have not. What's your take on this? I think most fans are, are excited. I think some of them were a little bit confused initially thinking that they'd be the hard knocks team um, mm -hmm. this summer. But no, it's they're going to cover that last, what, five or six weeks of the season. Six, yeah. Yeah. And so I, I think it's going to be, for most Browns fans, I think the it was more positive. They, they're looking forward to it. The last time the Browns were on hard knocks. We had, you know, Jarvis Landry giving us uh, hellish speeches to his teammates. And um, so, yeah, I think for us, you know, we're always, I think it's, it's good entertainment, good TV, and may, maybe see some things behind this, be, behind the, the, the curtains that we haven't necessarily. And being the, obviously the, the hard knocks and HBO must feel like the AFC North is pretty strong and that all four teams have a real opportunity to go, far this year yeah i mean last year 2023 was a great you know illustration of that with all teams finishing with a winning record three teams making the postseason so let's go back and talk about 2023 for a second uh cleveland made the postseason finished with an 11 and 6 record but boy mm -hmm. their their route to those playoffs was rather we'll put it circuitous because really you have deshaun watson as your guy he gets hurt yeah. he's lost for the season and you have all these different players coming in and being quarterback with, was it PJ Robinson who beat the San Francisco 49? It was Walker, PJ Walker, PJ Walker. PJ Walker. I'm Walker. sorry. Uh, PJ Walker, DTR comes in. He beats the Steelers. Yeah. Uh, and then Joe Flacco of all people who gets signed off of the street or off the couch. He comes in and leads them to the playoffs wins comeback player of the year kind of ruins it in the playoffs by throwing multiple pick sixes, but still, <laughs> Go back and let's revisit 2023 for a second. When you think about that season, was it a step forward for the organization or was it kind of them just treading water with all the injuries they sustained? No, it was a step forward. I think okay. that what you keep hearing amongst Browns fans and we keep talking about on the fanatical elves is that we're really trying to build consistency and that continuity. And we talk about you, you Steeler fans and you Steeler that steel organization and how it's it's hilarious listening even not even our podcast but other podcasts and they always go come back to you Steeler fans and Steeler organization and Mike Tomlin and only having three coaches and yeah so I think all of that is uh real positive in this right step you know Kevin Stefanski gets that extension Andrew Barry gets that extension the general manager um no it was a step forward considering we had five quarterbacks I can't even name all five I do know PJ Walker um, yeah. Oh, and I, I, we've got our dog in the background here. This is, That's this okay. is, this is Rufus. Um, <laughs> so um, yeah, it was, I think we had Joe Flacco, Flacco mania, but everything, you know, considering everything I, and, and, and still having Kevin Stefanski leading the group out of the locker room, you know uh, we m made some mistakes in that last game. Obviously Joe Flacco through, like you said, through the back to back interceptions that really, really hurt our, our opportunities there in Houston. Um, but no, I think it's a real step in, step going forward. I think we're all seeing this as something that can be very consistent. And we're Browns fans that are older, like myself, we're, we're comparing it back to the eighties and nineties run when, you know, we had Bernie and we had all those, you know, four st straight trips to the AFC championship uh, or three out of four years uh, AFC championship. So I think that's where we're, we're trying to get to That's That's the next, next real goal. So I have to ask about the quarterback position. So you had Deshaun Watson and I have heard the rumblings. I think you mentioned it last year when you joined my podcast, it might've been in season or maybe it was before the season. Cause I did the same thing last year leading up yeah. to training camp. 
And you kind of said there were some rumblings from Browns fans and maybe some reporting that not really sure about Deshaun Watson's want to, we'll put it that way in terms of, does he want to play anymore? Is, is he kind of done? I mean, he's dealt with some injuries since coming yeah, off of the yeah. suspension and the, the Browns, they let a lot of those quarterbacks that you named go and they signed Jameis Winston. Yes. Now Jameis Winston is not just another backup. He's very capable. He is yes. a backup quarterback, but he's very capable. And some people saw this not as an insurance policy, but maybe a shot across the bow of Watson. Like, Hey, if you don't want to be here, we have a guy. What are you hearing oh, no. about Deshaun Watson right now? Oh no, I think it's uh I don't we don't look at it that way. I don't think Browns fans do as far as that. Uh Jameson Winston is the backup and uh I think right now Deshaun is, you know, everyone's talking about how he's looking and his progressions and coming off of the sh shoulder injury again. Um he's spitting out images of him working out uh on Instagram still while he's on his big trip to Spain or whatever with his girlfriend that is a uh -huh. hot, you know, model or whatever. He's I, I'm a little annoyed by that. I've talked about a little bit of that, but um, no, I, I think everyone is really right now thinking that this is, this is where Deshaun could look like 2019, 2020 again, that this is everything. And in, in the uh, training uh, camps that we've already had, everybody that's analyzing him is saying that he's throwing the ball really well and that he just seems, you know, just, just raring to go. And I think fan base is super, super, I wouldn't say the whole fan base is super behind them. That's still the fan base is yeah. still divided. We've lost a lot of fans that just because of the signing of Deshaun, we've talked about yeah. that already. Um, I think that Jameson Winston is a, uh, my take on my biggest concern, and I've sh probably shared this on our shows and maybe with you, is Deshaun's health. He's played in 12 games over the last two seasons. Um, some of that due to the uh, suspension that he had. But just keeping him healthy. I personally, I don't think the kid can stay healthy. And and I, I that concerns me. That's yeah. one of the things that we can talk about that later or whatever. But that's something where... I think James and Winston is a very capable backup. I think a lot of people thought that they're going to bring in Joe Flacco back. That was yeah. initially the big conversation. And then there was all this sort of, well, if they bring back Joe, then people are going to want Joe to be in there because he did so great at the end of last season, other than the playoff game. Right. So, so well, hold uh, on. You, you said, you yeah. said he's played in 12 games. Deshaun Watson yes. has played in 12 games since they signed him. This is coming yeah. off the suspension yes. and all that's crap. Yes. We already know. Yeah. Have you seen enough in those 12 games that's such a small sample size yeah, no. that says, yeah, man, that's the guy. Like, no. okay, when he's – okay, thank you for being honest because I, from an outsider's perspective, yeah. trust me, as a Steeler fan, I keep tabs on the whole division as much as I can. Yes. And I have not seen the Deshaun Watson of 2019 and 2020, no. and that's what everyone pines for in Cleveland, and I understand that. But in the small sample size, and again – that's a really small sample size. And so it's not one of those instances where, well, we've had two full seasons of 17 games and he hasn't really performed. Mm -hmm. At what point do you think the Browns fan base is going to start to say, okay, I don't think 2019 and 2020 Deshaun Watson's ever coming back. Well, there's part of the, 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 the crowd, the fans that already believe that are, they're already talking that way. Um, and I, I also am one of those who doesn't necessarily you know, that magic of 2019 or 2020, whatever you, how he looked, I yeah. mean, he's an older player. He's not, and he's had injuries now and he's, he's not going to be the same guy. Some people still have this thing like, Oh, well, he could still, but the other part of this is, does he need to be, does he need That's to be moving point. forward? Because honestly, the way the Cleveland has, you know, we have a new uh, offensive coordinator in Ken Dorsey. So there's some excitement building around that because we're going to have somebody new kind of helping with the offense. So we don't quite know how that's going to, ultimately look but i would say um deshaun is not i, I want to see more like you i think you're absolutely correct with the, the it's not enough sample size um i just i personally just don't see him um being i don't know if he but he, i don't know if he needs to be that that guy so i haven't seen enough of it but i also don't believe that he's that same guy. And I don't think fans should re realistically here in Cleveland be thinking that he's going to be throwing 
you know, for three or four touchdowns every game because he hasn't. Even in the games that he's played in the 22 games, if you go back and look at his stats, I mean, it's yeah. very, very bland. bland. It's, it's not a lot and nothing it's to get excited point. about. That's a fair point. And and the thing is, though, is if, if the Browns are going to say, look, Deshaun, we don't need you to be the superstar. We don't need you to be a Pro Bowl, all pro quarterback that's putting up these gaudy statistics. Mm -hmm. We want to run the ball. Well, my next question is, who's going to be running the ball? Because the biggest <laughs> right. question that I've seen, and obviously yeah. as the editor of fansforsports.com, I'm seeing all yeah. this Browns coverage from yes. your buddy Lou Marconi, who's doing a great job of yes. up yes. you right as well. What's yes. the status on Nick Chubb? He's been out since that hideous uh, horrible injury yes. uh, hideous might not have been the best adjective to use there but when Minka Fitzpatrick tackled him low and he tore multiple ligaments in his knee yes. has had to have multiple surgeries yes is this guy going to be ready in week one that's a rumor yes oh I, I'm we're all uh talking about it here um honestly my my personal opinion is that you know we he Character Nick Chubb personally characterizes himself as as Batman. He does these things with the superhero figure and things like that. He's been posting some more videos in the last week, week and a half, of him working out. Some of the video, I don't know if you caught it. Some of the the workouts were just tremendous. You know, just where his knees, you couldn't even tell which yeah. one had been bothered. Um, is it? There was a, a writer, uh, Chris Evers. Worth, who did an article from Akron Beacon, Easterling was his last name, talked to Nick a couple weeks ago. I'm trying to get him on my show from the Akron Beacon Journal, a beat writer for the Brownies. And again, Nick didn't say he, he wouldn't be ready. Um, I would say, again, the fan bases, most of them feel like they're going to put him on the pup list, yeah. um, bring him back in week six, seven, or eight. But Nick Chubb is a special, unique one of one in a million football players, and I would not surprise me personally if if he does play in week one at some at some point. Not like the full low, but maybe they maybe they don't put him on the pup list. So I think it's really right now we don't know. We're speculating a ton. Um, it's two and a half months away from the season, and I think Nick Chubb is going to do some amazing things this year. Uh, He's a unique player that's different than anybody that I've seen in my covering the uh, you know running backs. So I think he's a special character and a special running runner. Yeah. So if let's assume that Nick Chubb, and this is my guess, my prediction yeah. is that he's going to start camp on pup. Yeah. They don't need him at camp. He doesn't need a training camp. Uh -huh. And then he might start the season on injured reserve. Sure. But nonetheless, that's my prediction. And then they'll get him back whenever, but who's going to run the ball is Jerome Ford is still on the roster. I believe. Yeah. Jerome but Ford. Who, who else will be the running backs? If they don't want to put the burden on, on Deshaun Watson, who's going to carry yeah. the load in the running game? Well, the, the two that they picked up, well, they have the DeAndre Foreman. who used to play with the what Bears last year a little bit. And then uh, yeah. Na, Na, Naheem Hines, um, he's still kind of coming off of an injury. So Foreman is kind of being talked about as, as being used along with Jerome Ford. Um, I think those would be the two. Uh, I don't know the speculation. Some people are, think that somehow Jerome Ford might be on – not be looked at as, as the main dude, but I, I think he will be. I think he did some really great things last year, closing out the year. And I think that he'd be just fine in, in that spot. We're not going to have Kareem Hunt. Of course, Kareem Hunt's sitting out there. He hasn't been picked up by a team yet, but that was always the, it was Ford and then, and then Hunt, you know, before yeah. that it was Chubb and Hunt. So I think it's going to be Jerome Ford and then the, the, the Foreman kid, um, the, the Heinz kids coming off that injury, but they could still use him in a variety of ways. So I think those, those would be the main guys. Okay. Let's talk about some acquisitions and let's start with free agency. Yeah. So uh, who are some of the players that were acquired via free agency? And let's also compare them to players that might be lost via yeah. free agency players that might have not been able to have been kept for uh -huh. salary cap purpose and things like that. But let's sure. start with the acquisitions first. Who did the, who did the Browns get that was exciting for the fan base? <laughs> well, we didn't get a lot. It, we didn't do that much, but we got the James and Winston, like you said, with the quarterback position. Yep. Um, we re-signed Zadarius Smith, which was kind of a big deal at the time yep. because opposite miles, you know, we weren't sure if he'd be coming back, but he decided that he wants to come back high energy, highly entertaining, uh, very good with the fan base. Um, we picked up Jordan Hicks linebacker. I think he used to play for the, 
what Eagles and maybe the Vikings uh, oh, previously. Right. We've been kind of hit with our – we lost our linebacking, you know, Taki Taki left, and as did Anthony Walker. And so to replace them, they brought in the Jordan Hicks. Um, they also brought in uh, your your former player, Bush. Uh, Devin. Oh, my gosh. That's right. You yeah. guys got Devin Bush. We have Devin Bush now. <laughs> So now have we have fun with that, John. Have yeah. fun with that. <laughs> we have JOK, uh, Jeremiah Wusakormo, and he's right. being looked at as kind of like the, the leader now. Um, but Jordan Hicks is a really solid history, a veteran guy, done a lot. I think he's worked with up uh, knows Kevin Stefanski was up there in Minnesota for a while. Um, the Browns did bring in another quarterback, Tyler Huntley. You oh, know that name, yes, from uh, the from the Ravens. Baltimore Ravens. Yep, they re signed their uh, their their punter, uh, Corey Borge I don't know how you spell his last or pronounce it. <laughs> um, they brought back Maurice Hurst, that's been a topic of conversation because the Browns did draft Michael Hall here out of Ohio State, which is a big deal. Uh, big, you know, a lot of Browns fans are Buckeye fans, and yep. um their question about Maurice Hurst, they brought him in on a very easy one year, $1.3 million deal. And there's conversation, you know, how many defensive linemen are the Browns going to keep? Some people are projecting that Maurice Hurst might not make the final cut, even though he's a veteran, but he's become a real fan favorite. He does the whole belly rub thing when he gets sacks and, and goes to airports and people are imitating him. So, um, they, they brought in some of those running backs that I mentioned before, and then they brought in the defensive tackle, Quentin Jefferson from the Jets. Um, that's the other defensive tackle. So that's one where they brought him in. So why maybe they don't keep Mar Maurice Hurst around. I think they'll keep Maurice. I think he's a veteran and I think he, he belongs there. Um, Rodney McLeod is coming back as the, he was with the Browns last year, but he's now said that this will be his last year. So he's going to retire. He says after this year. So, He's a solid veteran in the in that backside of the of the defense in our in our secondary. Um, yeah, Devin Bush and then uh, a couple guys in the offensive line. They resigned Michael Dunn. They brought in a tight end. Our tight end position is really struggling. Beyond, I mean, David Njoku's the guy, yeah. but then besides that, Harrison Bryant jumped ship. He'd been with the team for what four seasons. Harrison Bryant. He was very respectable. Could you know bring in. 30 catches, 300, 400 yards a season. Uh, I think he went out maybe to San Francisco. Okay. Um, a couple cornerbacks they brought in, Tony Brown and Justin Hardy. They brought in a center named Brian Allen. Uh, um, that's right. You all signed Brian Allen, former yes. Ravens. The, the Steelers yeah. were interested yeah. in being in, in on him as well. So that makes sense. Let, let me yeah. ask you a question real quick, yeah. John, not to interrupt yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is about because now you're getting into those depth players, which that's fine. Right. Um, let's talk about a player who's on the roster, but has been making news. He's not happy with his contract. And that's Amari Cooper. And yeah. Amari Cooper, you know, he's an aging veteran in the in the NFL, NFL standards. And I've been unbelievably impressed with this guy since he came to Cleveland. Because you you I remember when they made the trade with Dallas. And I'm like, this guy's career is going to end. He's still been very productive for Cleveland. And he's been a solid rock at a position that's been in flux for the Browns for a very long time. He wants a new contract. Is there any news or update on that? No updates other than people are just constantly speculating. Uh, he is the best uh, wide receiver the Browns have had since returning, honestly, um, yeah. maybe outside of Braylon Edwards. And that one year that we had, um, Gordon, uh, Josh Gordon go yes. for a, a bazillion yards in receiving. Um, but Amari Cooper's just been steady as a rock, like you said. Yeah. And um, him sitting out is not, you know, sitting real well with the fans. I know he got interviewed or he was doing some, some Instagram influencer talked to Amari Cooper last week. And basically Amari said, well, I want more money. Duh. <laughs> like, yeah, he wants more money. I think what's happened right now, according to some of the, guys here in the fanatical elves and listening to some of the different reports. Sam, one of our colleagues uh, lives down in Dallas, Texas, and he's been talking a little bit about CD lamb kind of holding out on his contract. And I think people are kind of waiting to see how much CD lamb's going to get in free agent or in, in his contract. Um, Amari got 20 million the last or this last year with the Brownies. Obviously he wants more, 
The question is, does he want like a, a two year is a two year deal? Okay. With him. Does he want a third year? Um, he is, like you said, getting a little bit up there in age. He's going to be what? 20. Is he 28 now? Going to be 29. Um, but he's had two very productive seasons for the Browns. Uh, the Akeem, what's the kid out in San Francisco that's on the trading block potentially? Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk. They there's been some speculation that he's still sitting out there, and that would the Browns and the 49ers swap uh, these guys? I want uh, Coop back, and he deserves. I think whatever he can that the Browns will. He 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 deserves a pay raise. And I, I hope the Browns are um, smart, and I think they, they will be. But if this thing gets into uh, training camp, when they go to Greenbrier down in West Virginia here in two and a half weeks, um, and he's still sitting out, that's going to be very more unsettling to all of us. And Amari Cooper is 30. He's 30 this year. Yes. So he's, okay. he's now on the wrong side of that 30, 30 sure. mark. You know, sure. so when we talk about that, and, and the Browns have to be, uh, you know, is he still going to be this productive if they give him a three year contract or is there an out in the claw? You know, there's a lot of different mm-hmm. factors there, but it's interesting uh, when you talk about that perspective and Amari Cooper. And, and, and could it be a distraction if he sits out training camp? We'll see. We won't cross that bridge if we get to. I do want to ask you a couple questions. First and foremost, you talked about how the Browns are searching for stability, and that's why they gave Kevin Stefanski and Andrew Barry new contracts. Mm-hmm. That makes mm-hmm. a lot of sense. He's been the coach of the year, I think, twice in his career. Um, how optimistic are Browns fans? I mean, last year you finished 11 and six, very respectable year with all the injuries that they had, especially a quarterback. What are the, what are the optimistic fans? Are they optimistic? What are the projections for the Browns in 2024? Well, the projections are that we're going to kick your butt. No, uh, gosh, we're going to kick, kick your Steelers butts <laughs> uh, twice. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think, I mean, our expectations are super, super duper high. I think I'm always the, the, I can be irrational and not always make a lot of sense at me as my, myself being a fan. But um, I also caution a lot of fans, especially maybe younger fans that are getting a little carried away now thinking that, you know, again, the Browns look great on paper. Yeah. And, and they finished remarkably well with 11 six record and Joe Flacco, Flacco mania coming in, doing all the stuff he did at the end of the year, starting five different quarterbacks. So I think the the idea is amongst everybody's mind here is that Deshaun's coming back. He's going to be better than ever, and we're gonna we're gonna win the division. A lot of people are talking about having the really wanting the needing to win that division. Um, it does a lot for you know home playoff games and everything else. All the different scenarios that happen if you can actually win the division. The Browns have not won the division as you know since what nineteen ninety four. It's it's they have not won the AFC North. The last time Ever. they won the division was the Central. The AFC is Central. It was nineteen ninety four. Two thousand and one was the year, yeah. or maybe it was two thousand two when the realignment happened and they went yes. to the AFC North. So yeah, it's it's yes. been a while. We'll put it that I way. think the expectation the, the concern amongst all Browns fans is that we're gonna be stronger than ever, but we also are looking at the rest of the division and you guys always being a five hundred team or better. Uh, under Mike Tomlin, the Ravens and the Bengals. Was Joe Schmo going to come back with, you know, his injured hand and going to be great again? And they were great before and made it to the Super Bowl. So it's going to be very competitive. The Browns' schedule is, I think, the second or third hardest schedule, or maybe it could be the number one hardest schedule on paper by by the stats, you know. So, well, I, I wanted to ask you as well from a, a an opposing team's fan base, and you're so glued into it, just like we are at the Steel Curtain Network with Steeler fans. What are the takes out there about the Steelers from your fan base, considering the roster turnover the Steelers have had, especially at the quarterback mm-hmm. position? You know, gone is Kenny yeah. Pickett, Mitch Trubisky, Mason Rudolph. In comes Deshaun. I'm, I'm time to Deshaun Watson. Thank God that's not true. Uh, thank. In comes Russell Wilson. In comes Justin Fields, yeah. and they have some. The, the Steelers made some big free agent signings, like mainly like a Patrick Queen coming in mm-hmm. an inside linebacker, someone everyone yeah. knows well from Baltimore. Right. What are what are Browns fans saying about the Steelers in 2024? 
Well, we always say this about you guys. You're always just there. You're always consistent. You're always winning. Um, we think last year, I remember at one point, oh, they're going to finish under 500. And we all get excited as Browns fans. Like, oh, they've never finished under 500 under Mike Tomlin, but it's going to happen this time. Nope, Mike Tomlin, they, you guys find the magic somehow. Um, we still post the picture of Ben Roethlisberger sitting on the sideline just to get us all pumped up as Browns fans. We still yeah. go back to that that picture of them beating the, them in the playoffs back in 2020. 2020. And, um, no, you guys, you know, did a lot of good things. Uh, you know, the quarterback situation is going to be interesting. I think Browns fans think like myself that, you know, you brought in, you know, Russell and he's going to start, I'm assuming. Um, yeah. I think we're all thinking that Justin Fields is eventually going to take over for you guys. And uh, there's a lot of Buckeye fans here. Oh, that's right. That's uh, in, interesting. In Columbus, that's there's a, and there's a lot of squealer. There are a lot of you Steeler fans, squealer fans, here in Columbus, which is kind of hard to, 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 to deal with. Um, what's even worse are those Steeler fans that are Michigan fans. So that's, you know, um, but anyway, no, I think it's going to be, um, we're, I mean, it's always competitive, always tough. I still consider us this rivalry, the, 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 the biggest one you guys might not, but I, as a Browns older Browns fan, I still think consider us against the, the Steelers as, as, as it. Uh, with the uh, Ravens as a close second. Uh, we, we really don't, yeah, we're not concerned yeah. about the Bengals because we have a five or six and one record under Stefanski um, against, yeah. Against, yeah. against the Bengals. And I think that even though the Bengals have a good team, we know how to beat them here in Cleveland. Um, Cincinnati, I think they beat us last time in Cincinnati, but we're going to beat them this year. So. so you bring up a good, interesting point because older Steeler fans will say the same thing you did. And that is who's the number one rival and it's Cleveland. Yeah. So my dad and his generation will say the Cleveland Browns are always the number one rival. And it's yeah. because of the historic aspect of it. Yes. And then I think when you look at more recent history and the younger fan base, it is all Baltimore. Like yes. Baltimore is the team like Baltimore. Yes. You might have these blips on the radar where Cincinnati is more of a, of a, I think back to the Chad Johnson, Carson Palmer era that the Bengals might've been number one for yeah. those years yeah. because the Ravens were a little bit down. What about the younger generation of Browns fans? Who do they view as the top rival? Is it Pittsburgh or is it someone else? No, it's the Ratbirds. It's, it's okay. the Ravens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, okay. Fair enough. no, it's definitely the, them. Um, no, I think then you know doing that's what the Browns did last year, which is I think is another symbol of why the Browns are more fans are excited about this upcoming year because they they were with Deshaun Watson last year, went to Baltimore, was losing that game. This is the game before he went out with the, the rest of the end mm -hmm. of the season injury, and they were able to come back and win that game in in Baltimore, and so it's given everybody sort of like this. Hey, we can do this. We've always been played Baltimore well. They've always been really good games for the most part. I can recall the game in 2020 during COVID, the game in Cleveland. You maybe you remember that game. It was a Sunday night game or a Monday night game. It was really cold um, in Cleveland and it went back and forth. Lamar Jackson had to go to the bathroom like in the third quarter and then he ran back and helped bring them back. And Baker Mayfield was quarterback and they almost pulled it out at the very end, but Baltimore won, I think 41 to 35 or something like that. So they've, they're, it's, it, it's a good competition. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And when you say it was a cold game in Cleveland, that doesn't really narrow it down. Like the mistake. Well, by the I, was was there. I was there. I was now stop with the mistake on the lake. Now, the, the, <laughs> now that's another big topic. I don't know if that's, you want to get into all of that, but the Browns, the big, big news this off season has been the stadium, the stadium. Yeah. And it's looking more and more and more like it's going to be built out by the uh, airport. It'll be a dome in Brook Park, which is a suburb next to the airport. And they're going to build a dome. Yes. Yes. That's, and I that's, think that's, that's, that's anti-football. Like what, what are we doing? Cleveland in a dome? Like he, well, <laughs> unless it's a retract, like that's stupid to me. I know why they want a Super Bowl. I'm sure. No, that's probably it. Am I right? Yes. They want a yes. dome so they can host a Super Bowl. They can all of those things, you know, there are final four is though, John, yeah. that should not have a dome because the element, that would be like green Bay playing in a dome. You just don't have, I'm not, Packers I'm not playing in a dome. See, this is funny because, we all, I believed you, like, I, that's really, honestly, like, deep down, like, as a Browns fan, I've always felt that way, but then in the last three or four months with all this chatter about the Dome and everybody's talking about it, and now 
basically the Haslam's, the owners of the Browns have bought this land in oh, wow. next to the air. I mean, it's all been taken care of. Like the land's been purchased. Brook Park, uh, the city government is basically welcoming them with open arms because they know what it could mean oh, to yeah. them. Um, there's been this more conversation the last week again about this con- um, the Brook Lake Airport which is next to Cleveland's current Cleveland stadium is a small little airport. It's called Burke Lake front airport. There's been some conversation that the city of Cleveland who wants to keep the Browns downtown right. is trying to buy that airport and then put the new stadium, potentially another dome or retractable dome, maybe right. on the stadium still or on the, on up on the lake shore. So those are the two main conversations. Their lease comes up in 20, 20- 28th i think with the the current stadium okay. so they've got to make a decision here pretty quickly from what i'm i'm hearing yeah. so um, it wouldn't surprise me sometime in the next y- six months that we wow. get more you know concrete sort of which direction are we going is that stadium they're in now that old i think it was constructed no. at the same time as the steelers stadium then heinz field now agriculture stadium which was built in, it was it was built, in yes. 2001 when they when they opened the, the their new team in 99 Oh, so that was the stadium. So that's yes. that's still not that old in yes. terms of stadiums con- conditions. So that's interesting. No, that's but interesting. They, they, there's a lot of conversation about how it was put up too quickly, you know, because they were trying to speed it up. And the, yeah, but they they've made a lot of renovations. I'm a season ticket holder, and I I find it a great stadium personally. I don't, uh, you know, I'm not sure what everyone's bickering about, but everybody wants to get something new. Are they going to use taxpayer dollars if they get a new stadium? Well, that's a conversation. Yeah, it's another part of the conversation. <laughs> I would, um, you know, the Haslam's and everybody that the, there's a lot of money there with. Oh the yeah. Pilot. So, um, but I think it's it's kind of been leaning that way and just in the conversation a lot up 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 here right now. Yeah, it's very interesting, John. Yeah. Uh, You've been very gracious with your time. I thank you very much for joining. Why don't you go ahead and plug what you're doing? Both uh, you've been doing some great work on the written side at fansforsports.com as well as your podcast at the Fanatical Elves. Yeah. Yeah. We're just having fun here with the Fanatical Elves and love being part of Fans First Sports and part of your team, Jeff. And just I know Fans First is growing uh, leaps and bounds and we're getting more affiliates and everything else. And Mm -hmm. we've been on this with you for a little bit over a year and, um, are, you know, we're, we're growing and our social media platforms are growing. Uh, we're getting more people to tune into us, trying to get them to download us on Apple, Spotify, all those uh, podcasting platforms. We do a lot of writing. I do writing for you guys here at Fans First as well. Um, variety of shows. We've got my Johnny Cleveland podcast, my Coffee Jolt with Johnny Cleveland. Uh, Lou Marconi, you mentioned, he's got his Burning River Browns talk. Um, shows a variety of other shows. Noah Olson's new. He's got his East Bank show. Steve Gill does his Dog Pound sh- uh, uh, South show. He lives down there in uh, Nashville. Mm-hmm. Um, Jarrell Flint's a new colleague does his dog radio programming. So we've got a lot of different shows, um, and just we continue to grow. And we're we're we'll probably be looking for more people to join our team um, here. Uh, eventually but we're excited to get into this new uh into the training camp yeah. part of the season and then into the season so yeah all right john thank you very much and thank make you. sure you check him out and uh but man it's been a great time i'm sure we'll be talking once the season rolls around when the steelers and browns play one another so take it easy john thank you thank you